Behold, I am with you all days, even to the consummation of the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When St. Augustine was once walking by the seashore, trying to understand the mystery of the Trinity a little better, for as much as he knew about it, there was still plenty he couldn't grasp. As he walked along, buried in thought, he came across a young child who had dug a hole in the sand and was running back and forth, filling a small bucket in the sea and emptying it in the hole he had dug. St. Augustine, being the gentleman that he was, kindly asked the boy what he was doing. The boy looked at him with innocent eyes and said, I am going to empty the sea into this hole that I made. The saint laughed and said, That will take you a pretty long time, for the sea is very big. The boy answered, Yes, but it is easier for me to do this than it is for you to understand the Trinity. Then he disappeared. Though it is impossible for us to understand the Trinity, it is helpful for our spiritual life for us to know that we are children of the Father, members of the Church of His Son, and temples of the Holy Ghost. From slaves of the devil, as we were before baptism, we have been made children of God and have become members of Jesus Christ. From vessels of corruption, We have been made temples of the Holy Ghost. Those words of our Lord in the gospel today come to mind here. I am with you all days. By being Catholics, we are raised to a great dignity by which we can be so closely united to God that we can even receive him in Holy Communion. Though our Lord has returned to heaven, he has not left us and will never leave us as long as we are faithful Catholics. But how are we as Christians united to the Trinity? In the eyes of the Father, we are raised to a great dignity and exalted above all others. We are the children of God, that God who is the King of kings. Him we call our Father, and he will never abandon us. The moment you received baptism, you have been made his adopted child, and he has become your father, who desires nothing but your eternal happiness. He so desires to bring you to heaven after your death that he sent his only son to redeem us by his suffering and death. Our union with the Son, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, is also very strong. We are his members, that is, We are as closely united to him as the members of a body are. We are the members of his mystical body, the church. But we are not only members of in a mystical sense, for our bodies also belong to him, and in a special manner are the members of Jesus Christ. St. Paul teaches, your bodies are members of Christ, and if you defile your body, By sin, you dishonor the members of Christ. Our Lord also reminds us this when he says, What you have done to these, the least of my brethren, you have done to me. And how can this be? It is because our Lord is here with his members, and whatever is done to them is also done to him. We are not only intimately united with the Father and the Son, but also united to the Holy Ghost, because we are temples of the Holy Ghost. In baptism, our bodies are anointed and sanctified to serve as a true and real dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. In the baptism ceremony, the priest says, depart from here, unclean spirit, leave this creature who was created in the image of God, and give room for the Holy Ghost that he may come and dwell here. From that point on, we are consecrated as the abode of the Holy Ghost. Recalling this fact to mind can be helpful in keeping one in the state of grace. St. Paul tells us that the temple of God is holy, and we are that temple. 
Think of it. God has placed us under the angels, but has crowned us with an honor which surpasses them. God granted us the honor to be his children, members of, his, of the mystical body of his Son, and the temple of the Holy Ghost. What dignity can be greater than this? But we must remember that God wishes something of us in return. He asks that we keep this temple holy and pure, that we not harm the other members of his church and have a fear of offending God our Father. In short, we should strive to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is. We should never be satisfied with the level of holiness which we have achieved, but always strive to come closer to God. St. Paul tells us to mind our thoughts, words, and deeds that we may not offend our Lord, so that we may one day appear without blame before the judgment seat of Christ. Never forget that we are children of God our Father, members of Jesus Christ, and temples of the Holy Ghost. We have been blessed with this great grace, and we should not be ashamed of living and acting in such a way that tells the whole world that we are not of this world. If we keep these truths before our eyes, we will live and continue to live as pious Catholics and one day have the happiness of being united in heaven with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.